Hi everyone. In this totally normal and not absurd episode of Angry Angora, I'm going to teach you how to make my favorite recipe of dal. That's lentils. There are many different variety of lentils. This one happens to be red split lentils or masur dal. Because I am currently in the process of moving out of this country, I'm using a wide saucepan for lentils. Normally I would use a tall saucepan, a few quarts or liters, whichever your system you're working in. Uh, I'm going to make a cup of lentils. To start with lentils, you always want to pick out potential rocks um, because you never know what thing ends up in your lentils that may or may not be a lentil. Next we want to rinse our lentils. Lentils have a lot of, uh, I believe it's starch on them. But you want to rinse them off, and you'll notice as I am handling them, there's a lot of uh, starch coming off, and the water is getting cloudy. When you're done with this step, just drain the lentils. Oops. Now for one cup of masur dal, I use four cups of water. One. Two. I put it on medium high heat, you can put it on high, the part, basically here you just want to um, bring the lentils to a boil and then we'll do what's next with that. The very standard thing to serve with lentils is rice, basmati rice. As you can see behind me, the scene developing behind me, currently at the current moment, presently behind me, we have our lentils boiling. We are going to use this saucepan to make rice behind me. Starting rice is similar to starting dal. You want to take however much you're making in this case, a half cup. Pour it into your pan and rinse it. That will get the starch off the rice. Now drain it. And for cooking rice, basmati rice in particular, two parts water to one part rice. We have half a cup in there, which means we are going to measure out a cup of water and put it into the rice. Now we move it to the stove.
Right when you set the rice to boil, you want to put a few drops of oil or fat or butter. My clarified butter is a little solid. This is about the amount you'll need. Just put it in there. Leave it, it'll melt on its own. Turn the rice to low. And cover it. This is a metal spoon. This is a non-stick pan. If you are using metal in non-stick, do not let it scrape the sides of the pan. It will scratch your non-stick and ruin it. Normally I would not use non-stick, but this is what we have. See, I'm just skimming the foam off the top. This also helps ensure that your lentils do not boil over out of the pan. Because remember, a watch pot never boils unless it is jaw, dal, or rice, in which case it will boil over. We're leaving that here. I've got my eye on you. I'm going to move to the next step, which is preparing the tarka, or sort of fried base of the dish. Now, in a lot of dishes, you do the tarka, and then you add everything else in. But in the case of this dal recipe and a few others, the tarka happens while other things are already happening. So for my tarka, I have garlic, ginger, ginger is good for you, a bit of tomato paste, we won't use the whole jar, and then cumin, which you will see when I fry everything together. Now, I like to be generous with garlic and ginger both. I like for my dishes to be very flavorful. Um, so I'm going to use three large cloves of garlic, and a sort of arbitrary amount of ginger. If it's in little uh, pieces like this, not quite minced pieces, but maybe tiny strips. It's not the end of the world. This all fries up. If you have chunks of ginger, fried ginger, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty delicious. Now we'll do the same to the garlic. And uh, the trick for garlic is that you want to smash it in order to peel it, because if you're just trying to peel it by, you know, straight taking the peel off, uh, you might go a little crazy. Your garlic and ginger are ready. Now, sometime along the way, while the lentils are boiling, I add turmeric, chili powder, and salt. Turmeric haldi that will make the lentils yellow. I could not tell you how much that was. But you stir it in and it becomes a really nice golden color. Um, if you go overboard on this, it will be it will have a bit of a uh, a mustard taste to it. 
which isn't the end of the world, but this is sort of the golden color you're looking for. The chili powder is just for however spicy you want it to be. Um, my spice tolerance is quite high, so if you do not like spice, you're more than welcome to skip this step. This is sort of a, uh, a, a doll, an amount of spice in the doll that I would be willing to serve to others. Um, now that this is looking pretty good, pretty happy, healthy, holy, so I'm going to turn the heat down on this and just let it simmer. As for salt, um, this is another thing I'm quite arbitrary with. I just, you know, put my salt in, stir it, hope I haven't oversalted it. If I taste it and don't like the amount of salt, I add a little bit more salt and so on. The rice, as you can see, has worked out its bubbles, so it is just working on that last bit of water. Now it's time for the tarka. This front pan is for our tarka. I usually use a small cast iron skillet, uh, but again, that is packed up currently, and so this is what we're working with. Turn the heat to low-ish, maybe slightly higher than low. It really depends on the type of oil or fat you're using. In this case, I'm using clarified butter, and so I'm gonna use a healthy dollop. Clarified butter tends to take lower heat than would say olive oil, coconut oil, canola oil, or whatever else you decide to use. So I poured some of the clarified butter, ki or kyo, depending on uh, what you want to call it, back into the jar. I just want enough to sort of coat the bottom of the pan, though there are people out there who like to fry with the, with the, um, the clarified butter. And so now I'm going to add my whole cumin seed. Um, this is another sort of arbitrary measure of how much to use. Meanwhile, the rice seems to have boiled out its liquid, so I'm going to turn this off. The doll is happy simmering. Turn the heat ever so slightly lower. Once this gets extra fragrant and starts to have a bit of darker browning to it, or even a little bit of blackening, we want to add the ginger and garlic. You have to be a little quicker with this bit because the pan is already quite hot. The ginger and garlic take the heat and the frying quite quickly. And so you just want to stir that nicely, get that bit of oil coating, clarified butter coating on the ginger and garlic, and we're going to let this brown. In the meantime, you'll want to open your can of tomato paste. You can be generous with this. You can use like half of the jar with one spoon if you want. I'm gonna go for a healthy, maybe third of the jar. Bring it over, dump it in. Stir it. So since this is starting to come together pretty solidly, and also because the oil has entirely been taken up by the tomato paste, by the lentils, I'm going to add a hint of water. If you have oil in the pan already, do not do this. It will splatter, it will hurt. But doing this helps thin out the tomato paste, make it easier to stir, make it slightly easier also to fry in your base. 
When you see the tomato paste starting to pick up darkened cooked flecks, like so, uh, you know that it is closer to being ready. And so now we are going to dump this mixture into our dal. Now we stir this in. And your dal at this point is basically ready as long as the salt is right. Uh, but I like to give it a few minutes once the tarka is added in so that the flavors of the tarka can get a bit more incorporated. Um, and also so uh, the ginger, garlic, and cumin can soften just a little bit. Um, depending on how fried the cumin seed is, it might be crunchy when you first eat it, but if it sits for a while, say a day, and you heat it up and eat it the next day, it will be totally fine. The rice looks good. It's been sitting for a few minutes, so I'm going to take the rice paddle and fluff it just a bit. Good. Keep your rice covered so that it does not dry out. What's up, y'all? My food is ready. Bone apple tea.